Hey everybody, it's Eddie Joe of Crypto. Hope you're having a great day. We have a lot of news to cover, so I'm probably gonna speak a little bit fast. You can always pause and do all that good stuff, have questions, leave it in the comments. Um, the UN is warning uh, major countries to hey, cut it out on the uh, rate hikes given the possibility of a global recession. That's kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. Um, it'll hit emerging markets and lower markets first or countries first, but it would it would bubble up to everybody else. They're saying that the best way to do it is to go after uh, supply chain issues and fix those problems first. So that's something to pay attention to. Another broad stroke thing is the Biden administration has reached out to you know Congress to say, hey, look, listen, we need to kind of step up, uh, step up our efforts and move a little faster to getting crypto regulation on the books. And, you know, insiders are saying that, you know, there's excuse me, there's still a couple of months away from having crypto regulation. I'm hoping that they're working with industry insiders, that they're seeing, you know, um, information coming from the industry that would help them make up these new regulations, make them transparent, makes them make them clear and put, you know, good guardrails, guardrails out there without stopping or ebbing the flow of new technology and innovation. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm hoping for. Now, SEC went after Kim Kardashian. Everybody knows it. We've all heard about it. I didn't really want to cover the story. What I really wanted to note to everybody, sorry, my dog is going nuts. Um, what I really wanted to note about was the messaging that was in that move. Yes, they sent a message to uh, other influencers to pay attention to what they're saying. Um, yes, they sent a message to other projects that are out there, and that's a big one because through that message to other crypto projects, what they're really doing is telling the CFTC, hands off. They're really peeing on trees and setting boundaries is what the SEC is doing, is what Gary Gensler is doing. That's why he was on CNBC yesterday kind of bragging about what he did. Listen, you know, this could have been that, that whole thing could have been accomplished by notifying Kim Kardashian, hey, this is what you did. That's not a good thing. I think here's how to correct it, right? Um, she's already being sued, by the way. Right? Her and other influencers are already being sued over that because it turned out to be allegedly a rug pull, probably unbeknownst to her. She doesn't control it. Somebody paid her 250 grand to make a post. She made the post, put hashtag ad on it. And that's not enough. They need to know that it is an ad. They need to know that you've been compensated. They need to know who compensated you and how much you were compensated. Those are SEC rules when you're when you're shilling, you know, securities. And see, isn't that the message? They went out and they said basically that it was a security and you were shilling it. You're not licensed. You didn't know what to do, so you're paying a fine. Boom. So she is cutting a check, getting rid of the problem as quickly as possible. She doesn't need the negative press. She doesn't want the negative press. Didn't so for that little thing that she did, or what was, you know, basically a little thing, turned out to be a very big deal. And it turned out to be a very expensive mistake. But again, I think that nobody nobody knew before what the rules were. Now they know. But I think most most importantly is that SEC sent a message to the CFTC. And that's what I'm paying attention to. MasterCard has a new service, a new software. They bought CypherTrace. CypherTrace has an AI-driven algorithmic um, tool that will go out, do on-train analysis, and let you know card issuers like MasterCard banks know that there is a transaction that might be associated with crime or other illicit affairs, right? That's very cool software. There is similar software for fiat, for monitoring, you know, regular fiat, you know, transactions. This one is for crypto specifically. And I find it to be interesting because think about it. Yes, you're looking for nefarious transactions, but you can also focus that on other types of transactions. So I do pay attention to that. I do pay attention to it. Um, Kathy Wood's ARK Investment is offering separately managed account services specifically for crypto. So if you're a financial advisor, wealth advisor, wealthy person, you've got those kind of services going on. You can add this to your portfolio of services to help differentiate you from competitors.
very interesting. Crypto is not going away when you have, you know, substantial firms like this adding those kinds of services. And I don't mean just them. I mean, BlackRock's in it. JP Morgan, Citi. I mean, just it's not going away. Who's behind FTX? BlackRock is one of the biggest investors in FTX. There are significant transactions going on and we should be paying attention to all this stuff. All right. Do your own research. Look around. See what hits. See what see what you're paying attention to. You're interested in that particular project. Great. Go do some research on that project. Listen to a bunch of people read up on things, read into the technology, read to see if they're doing something funny. How long have they been around? What their community is like? How much development is going on? Who is involved? And come to your own conclusions. This is why I do the research. This is why, why me and my kids are on this journey. And I'm happy to share our journey with you. Um, Binance, adding dual investment, adding XRP to their dual investment products is a very big deal because it's XRP. Remember the other day I was asking you, what's the utility for XRP? What's the utility? Because the real, the real golden egg there is XRP Ledger, which is owned by Ripple. Well, here's one. I mean, four to four percent to 179 uh, percent return. You know, APR. That's kind of big. Basically, sell your sell your asset. You know, set a date in the future, set a price in the future, sell your asset, and you can make money off of this. Very interesting. It gets a little bit beyond the complex, the normal complexities of a regular transaction. So you're going to pay attention again when you look at all of these different things. You're starting to see comparisons, not necessarily the same exact things, but you can draw comparisons to the complexities of stocks, options, bonds trading, or even forex trading, happening over in crypto, as crypt as the cryptoverse matures. This is these are the things that I'm paying attention to. These are the things that I'm putting you know I'm putting more time into, or investing more time in researching. Okay, um, now. Celsius is set October 17th as their auction date. And who do I expect to be taking a part in that? The same players. And I think the top two players are going to be FTX and Binance. Binance lost out to FTX on the Voyager auction. I, I, I think they might come a little harder on the uh, Celsius auction. Everybody's wondering, like, why are they doing it? There's a lot of assets there. There are a lot of assets there that, that, that make it worthwhile. So, again, I pay attention. Binance is making moves. They're the, they're the largest exchange of its ilk in the world. And they are, I mean, they just cut a deal with Kazakhstan to offer services there. Working with the government. Big deal. There are big things going on around the world. And the big players obviously are there. So these are the things that I'm paying attention to. So numbers might be down right now, but with all of this infrastructure, all of these things being set in place, I think certain things are going to become the norm, and I think values are going to go up. When? No idea. None. But I am investing in the future. Anyway, we should take a look at the numbers and what's going on out there in the world. Um, let's scoot on over. Let me refresh this. All righty. So winners and losers. We don't have a lot of losers. You know, the top the top two, you know, losers, decentralized social. No, nothing about it. Um, Terra Luna Classic wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Um, let's see. Looking at the winners. Everybody on this list is a winner. So let's look at this. Polygon is up, you know, 7 percent. They were up 8 percent, you know, just a little while ago. Um, Chainlink is up seven percent. Let's see, Elrond. I heard people talking about Elrond. I haven't. I have not done any research on Elrond, but I'm starting to hear their name pop up more and more. They're up eight percent. Um, let's see. Is anybody else in this list that I'm paying attention to? And the answer is no. Nobody else in that in that list I'm paying attention to. Uh, the Fear and Greed Index up to twenty. Or down to 20. Remember, it was at 24, 23. No, now it's down to 20. Yep. Now, you have macro events that are going on. Um, Putin's still going nuts. 
Don't know what he's going to do. Apparently, he did move some nuclear weapons, and I think that's just to try to signal to everybody that things are going to go on, or could go on. I think he's. I think he might be saber rattling there, because um, it would be silly to start a nuclear war. Just saying, right? The wind blows differently. That nuclear waste blows right into Russia. That would be a problem. So something to think about. Um, you have. Um, North Korea sending, this is Stitch, I told you he'd be visiting every now and then. You have North Korea um, sending missiles over Japan. That's a problem, but that's also a nuclear, nu not nuclear, an another macro event that can affect things. You have um, OPEC saying that they might lo decrease um, oil output. And based on that, you already have gas prices in the United States going up, right? In a minute, in a minute. So that's a big deal. So you have macro events that are going on. Again, back to the UN telling global economies, hey, look, listen, st cut it out with the, with the rate hikes. Um, this is why. There are a lot of macro events that are still going to affect the global economy, and rate hikes are just going to exacerbate the problem. So these are the things that people are paying attention to. So when I look at all this, I sit back and I go, ugh. I wonder if, I wonder if Powell's paying attention. And really, that's what we need. We need sound minds paying attention. And I think he got the message because there was a secret meeting yesterday by the Fed, right? It's closed door. And I'm pretty sure that was one of the topics that was there. Okay. Um, if you look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin is trading. Sorry, he wants to play. Bitcoin is trading within my middle band now. And it's at about, you know, it's coming close to 20,000. Okay, which is kind of a big deal. Okay, do I think it's going to go up from here? It could. Do I think it's going to stay up? Not at all. Not at all. I do not think it's going to stay up. All right, I think it's going to continue to bounce, go up, go down, go up, go down, and just move laterally. Some of those moves will be a little bit bigger. Some of the moves will be a little bit smaller. But I think those moves are going to happen. And I think it's going to happen over time until we have some definitive, you know, events transpire. OK, so that's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm basing mine on. So to me, being that all of these coins are so low to me, this is still a buying opportunity. Right. I mean, Bitcoin hasn't even moved a thousand dollars and people are like, oh, my God, it's going up. Man. No, man, relax, relax. Right. Let's relax. Just do your own research, slow down, use dollar cost averaging to your advantage. Okay? Everything right here is looking green. But remember, that's only up from where it was. I mean, Bitcoin is not you know surpassed twenty thousand yet. Ethereum is is at thirteen fifty. That was a big deal number for Ethereum. You know, XRP is at forty seven, Matic is at eighty two, almost eighty three cents. Those are all really good moves, but they're nothing major. They're nothing major. Create your strategy, stick to your strategy, move on from there. Okay? At least that's what I'm doing. Again, I'm not a financial planner. I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm sharing with you my thoughts on what I'm doing with my money and what my kids are doing with their money. Yes, they have their own money. That's, you know, you get money on you for your birthday, that's your money. But they're learning how to invest their money and better leverage their money. Um, looking at everything, yeah, like I said, we're seeing things in green, but nothing's huge. I, I, I do look at Polygon. It's you know at about it's about right there at eighty three cents, and this was up from like what yesterday seventy seven cents. I think was the lowest number I saw yesterday. Right, I don't live in the numbers on a daily basis. I pop in, look to see, get a feel, and then I pop out. Okay. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. I hope you have a great day. Remember, do your own research. If you like what I'm sharing with you, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and absolutely hit the notification bell so you know every single time I drop a new video. And don't forget to tell your friends. Bye-bye.